Helping people keep their balance when they need it most. When we push or pull, we're exerting forces. Like right now, I'm exerting a force by pushing on this door. And the door is pushing back. Because the forces are equal and opposite, they're in balance. Whoa! I lost my balance there. Yeah. So the weights at this end of the ramp are pushing down this way, and my weight at the other end is pushing down the other way. That's what makes things be either in or out of balance. Whoa! Take a look at this. It's our balance meter stick of science. And right now, we have the same amount of weight, the same distance from the center, and it's in balance. Watch what happens when we put twice as much weight on one side. Well, it's out of balance until we put this one over here. And look, two times the weight, two times the distance, and it's in balance. We can do it with three times as much weight. Look, one, two, three times the distance from the center, and three times as much weight, and it balances. See, now, whenever the stick moves. Notice that every place on the stick is moving in a circle. Now, when a force makes something move in a circle, we call it a twisting force or a torque. So the torque from this one weight equals the torque from these three weights, and they're in balance. Of course, they're, now, they're, now they're out of balance. Sorry. This not only works with a stick, it works with this. The giant balance beam of science. <laughs> Down here, we've got these guys. It's our grunge band of science. Hit it. So right here is the center of the beam. The whole beam can turn around this big metal rod. See, when I'm up here, I only have to push down a little bit to lift the whole band. They must weigh 500 kilograms, half a ton. Look, I can hold them all up just by sitting here. Balance rocks. Hello. How are you? I'm Hazel Fanny, the science granny, oh with a demonstration on balance. I hold here in my hand a seven centimeter diameter industrial type rope. You know, the kind that you use to haul a 327 fuelie out of a 64 vet. I and a few of my friends from the women's club are going to do our very best to pull this end while some sweet young volunteers are going to pull their end. This will demonstrate that when forces are in balance, they are equal. Or when forces are unequal, an object moves. Okay, let's go, you Yancy boys. Let her rip. Oh, those Nancy boys are going in the mud. Yay! Wasn't that fun? That's what happens when forces are unequal. Free. person in the show with just one thumb. Put your thumb on someone's forehead and see if they can stand up. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't get up. Your center of gravity here in your belly needs to be supported or you will fall down. Mm -hmm. Right now it's supported by the chair. In order to stand up you have to be able to lean far enough forward to get your center of gravity over your feet. How did you hold me in the chair? Well, look how short you are. Center of gravity. When you push or pull in an object you create a force. When I push with the spoon, my force pries the lid open. Pushing or pulling creates a force. It also creates a dang fine glass of chocolate milk. Snowboarding, knees, arms, balance! Snowboarding has a lot to do with your center of gravity, keeping your knees bent, keep your balance on your board. You just have to keep your shoulders level, so you won't fall over backwards and get in the back seat or anything. The back seat is when you get your weight over the back of your foot, and your board tends to fall back a little bit, and usually fall on your butt.
This domino is standing up. But if we push it up here, it will fall over because its center of gravity gets past this corner. Now, when that happens, the domino is moving in a circle. Weird, huh? Everything, no matter what its size or shape, has a center of gravity, uh, even this refrigerator. So watch. If I push here, right through the refrigerator's center of gravity, it slides along the floor without tipping. The forces are in balance. But if I push up here, the pushing force becomes a twisting force, and the refrigerator starts to turn around that corner down there. If I keep going, the weight of the refrigerator acting through the center of gravity takes over, and the refrigerator goes over. Everything, no matter what its size or shape, has a center of gravity. Centers of gravity are good. And the last domino is in place now. Big domino, they're up. Here's a really cool thing you can do to show forces and balance. It's easy. Make a mobile. We use fishing line and chopsticks or whatever else we want to use. As long as the forces are equal on each arm, the mobile will balance. No matter how an object is shaped, it always has a balance point. Please, consider the following. Hey! If an object is round, its balance point is always in the middle, no matter how you hold it. We also call the balance point the center of mass, or the center of gravity. Anyway, it's always in the middle, and when you set it down, it'll always be in balance. If you have an unusually shaped object, like a bowling pin, its center of gravity, its center of mass, is in the middle if you look at it this way, but it doesn't look like it's in the middle if you look at it this way. It's somewhere in here. So, if you go to slide it along the table and you push below its center of mass, it slides along fine. If you push above its center of mass, you get a twisting force, and it falls right over. To go bowling, you need a bowling ball. <laughs> Thanks. Now, when you're holding something heavy like a bowling ball, it tries to throw you off balance especially when it's above your center of mass. So when you bowl, you gotta take that into account. Here we go. Uh. That's sort of the old fashioned way of bowling. I prefer the Strike Master 300. Here we go. Right through their centers of mass, their balance points. Thank you for joining me on Consider the Following. This is my brain. Now, if we look at it this way, we see an image like this. And right there, that's my inner ear. That's what I use to keep my balance. Look how tiny it is. It's wild. I'm Faye Horak, and I'm a neuroscientist, and I study how the humans use their brains to balance. The human body is essentially unstable, and it's not easy to balance because we're so tall and we have short feet and the nervous system needs to be active every moment, controlling our muscles to keep our balance. We can tell which muscle she's using, which forces she's using, and how she's moving her joints to coordinate. <laughs> we also have a special machine that will allow people to be moved in space in different directions so that we can record how the inner ear is used for balancing. We're interested in looking at how the balance sensors in the inner ear uh, drive eye movements every time you move your head. Humans use three main sensors for balance. They use their eyes, they use their inner ear, and they use their muscle and joint sensors for balance. And all these sensors come together in the brain to tell us where we are in space. <laughs> Surprise! Come on, you guys, get off me, huh? Come on, off! Oh, yeah. Oh, that's When forces are unequal, they are out of balance. Like this. When forces are equal, they are balanced. Like this. Suppose you're on a thin rail, 10 meters above dangerous waters. But you're on a special bicycle that has a 100 kilogram weight about three meters below you. But then your center of gravity is way down there. And it's almost impossible to make the bicycle tip over. But take six of me up here. That is scary. Ooh. Hey. You shall obey my every word if you want to be a true balance master, Luke Tightroper. Yes, Toda. I want to be a balance master. Use the force, Luke. 
Use your center of gravity, Whoa. young one. Use the force, Luke. I am using the forks. I said use the force, not the forks. I'm talking about your forces in balance. These are the grandstands at Husky Stadium at the University of Washington. Tons and tons of steel welded together to support the weight of thousands of screaming fans. And a few hot dog vendors. But these forces weren't always in balance. I remember back in 1987, they were putting those things up. Forces got out of balance big time. See these cables? They're pulling up. The weight of the bridge is pulling down. The cables keep the road from falling in the water. <laughs> Wasn't always like that. Though. Those were the days. off today. I don't know what the problem is. I'm feeling a bit wobbly. Then have I got something for you. It's called balance. Simply place the drinks around the tray's center of gravity. Works every time. Thanks for the tip, Meg. I'm feeling much better now. For those days when unequal forces proved to be too much, try balance. Your center of gravity will thank you. When you're standing up straight, your center of gravity is right over your feet. But when you pick up something heavy, it's got a center of gravity too. And its weight is trying to make you twist, trying to throw you off balance. That's why you have to lean back to keep the center of gravity of the thing you're carrying, plus you, over your feet. You see, a lot of people carry heavy things on their heads. That way, the center of gravity of the thing you're carrying and your own center of gravity are in a straight line. And it's easy to keep your balance. Whoa! It's time for Balance Counterbalance. Good evening. I'm Robin Tark, and so am I. Balance, as you might know, exists when opposing forces are equal. But what then is counterbalance? An excellent question. A counterbalance is something that opposes one force with another equal force. As with this weight, it counters the other weight and balances the scale. Exactly. Uh, if, say, I were to grab your hands as you lean back in your chair, you would be in balance and I would be your counterbalance. Aha! But remember, without a counterbalance, there is no balance. I'm Robin Tark, and uh, so am I. And thank you for joining us on Balance Counterbalance. Next week, Gruntled Disgruntled. You've probably ridden in an elevator several times. You ever wonder how they work? Yeah, well, now, Bill, it's just all a matter of balance, really. Balance. Now, let's take a look at the diagram that I have in the house right here. So, Bill, here we are in the elevator, and that's the cable on top of the elevator, and that's the motor, and that's my favorite part of the whole elevator system, the counterweight. See, without the counterweight, the motor would have to lift the whole weight of the car every time it went up and down. The counterweight keeps it in balance. Yeah, the counterweight. The counterweight weighs the same as the elevator. As we move up, the counterweight moves down. Hey, what more do you want, honey? Don't call me, honey. Give in to my side of the force, Kate. Never. I will never give in to your side, Lardinator. Think of how strong we could be together. If I were to come to your side, our forces would be unequal, and we'd be out of balance. Yeah, this is way funner. Now, Bill, take three steps back from the wall. One, two, three. Put your head against the wall and pick up the chair. Pick up the chair. Now try and stand up. Stand up. I can't quite do it. But I can because I'm a girl. All lower center of gravity only has to move a little bit to be supported. One, two, three. Okay. Piece of cake. It's a beautiful day. Got my helmet, got my bicycle. All we need is a little torque. Torque is free every time you push down right here. When you put a force on the pedal, that force makes this arm go around. And that arm going around is a twisting force or a torque. The torque puts a force in the chain, and the chain puts a torque on the gear back here. That makes the wheel go around. That makes the bike go. See, without torque, a bicycle would just be a hunk of metal that sat there all day. And forces are unequal and object moves. Hoo-wee! When you use a tool with a handle, you make unbalanced forces. See, tools use torque.
fast and slow, sitting, spinning, stop and go. It's a world in motion, it's a world with forces. And it's true that when you push or pull, you're making forces. You can feel, but be careful, won't you? Cause you could fall down. So let's balance this. Balance with it. If you need one last force, you better tap for the balance in it. Balance this. Balance with it. If you want to create joy, grab an edge, start to spin it. To see the middle's the center of gravity And then stay that way unless you're all uneven Yeah, we all have one deep inside But sometimes it seems hard if I just get this It can change position So let's balance this Balance with it If you equalize the voice You balance out on the balance in it Balance this Balance with it If you want to create joy Grab an edge, start to spin it Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it a balanced program. Hope you think we forced it on you. <laughs> Get it? Balance? Force? Whoa! Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. right over your hand. Ah! I'm kidding, I'm kidding! <laughs> but I am serious about belly! Science rules. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Brought to you by Big Poles. Helping people keep their balance when they need it most. When we push or pull, we're exerting forces. Like right now. I'm exerting a force by pushing on this door. And the door is pushing back. Because the forces are equal and opposite, they're in balance. Whoa! I lost my balance there. Yeah. So the weights at this end of the ramp are pushing down this way. And my weight at the other end is pushing down the other way. That's what makes things be either in or out of balance. Whoa! <laughs> Take a look at this. It's our balance meter stick of science. And right now, we have the same amount of weight, the same distance from the center. And it's in balance. Watch what happens when we put twice as much weight on one side. Well, it's out of balance until we put this one over here. And what? Two times the weight, two times the distance. And it's in balance. We can do it with three times as much weight. three times the distance from the center and three times as much weight and it balances see now whenever the stick moves notice that every place on the stick is moving in a circle now when a force makes something move in a circle we call it a twisting force or a torque so the torque from this one weight equals the torque from these three weights and they're in balance of course now they're now they're out of balance sorry this not only works with a stick it works with this the giant balance beam of science <laughs> down here we got these guys it's our grunge band of science Hit it! So right here is the center of the beam! The whole beam can turn around this big metal rod! See, when I'm up here, I only have to push down a little bit to lift the whole band. He must weigh 500 kilograms, half a ton! Look, I can hold them all up just by sitting here. Balance rocks! Hello! Who are you? I'm Hazel Fanny, the science granny, oh with a demonstration on balance. I hold here in my hand a seven centimeter diameter industrial type rope. You know, the kind that you'd use to haul a 327 fuelie out of a 64 vet. I and a few of my friends from the women's club are going to do our very best to pull this end while some sweet young volunteers are going to pull their end. This will demonstrate that when forces are in balance, they are equal. Or when forces are unequal, an object moves. Okay, let's go, you Yancey boys. Let her rip. Oh, 
those nancy boys are going in the mud. Wasn't that fun? That's what happens when forces are unequal. Three. You can hold a person in a shell with just one thumb. Put your thumb on someone's forehead and see if they can stand up. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't get up. Your center of gravity, here in your belly, needs to be supported or you will fall down. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's supported by the chair. In order to stand up, you have to be able to lean far enough forward to get your center of gravity over your feet. How did you hold me in the chair? Well, look how short you are. Center of gravity. When you push or pull on an object, you create a force. When I push with the spoon, my force pries the lid open. Pushing or pulling creates a force. It also creates a dang fine glass of chocolate milk. Snowboarding, knees, arms, balance! Snowboarding has a lot to do with your center of gravity, keeping your knees bent, keep your balance on your board. You just have to keep your shoulders level so you won't fall over backwards and get in the back seat or anything. The back seat is when you get your weight over the back of your foot and your board tends to fall back a little bit and you usually fall on your butt. All you have to do is keep the force of your weight right over your hand. I'm kidding, I'm kidding! <laughs> but I am serious about belly! Science rules. Inertia is a property of matter. Brought to you by Big Poles, helping people keep their balance when they need it most. When we push or pull, we're exerting forces. Like right now, I'm exerting a force by pushing on this door, and the door is pushing back. Because the forces are equal and opposite, they're balanced. Well, I lost my balance there. Yeah. So the weights at this end of the ramp are pushing down this way, and my weight at the other end is pushing down the other way. That's what makes things be either in or out of balance. Whoa! Take a look at this. It's our balance meter stick of science. And right now, we have the same amount of weight, the same distance from the center, and it's in balance. Watch what happens when we put twice as much weight on one side. Well, it's out of balance until we put this one over here. And what? Two times the weight, two times the distance. And it's in balance. We can do it with three times as much weight. Look. One, two, three times the distance from the center and three times as much weight. And it balances. See, now, whenever the stick moves, notice that every place on the stick is moving in a circle. Now, when a force makes something move in a circle, we call it a twisting force or a torque. So the torque from this one weight equals the torque from these three weights. And they're in balance. Of course, they're now, they're, now they're out of balance. Sorry. This not only works with a stick, it works with this. The giant balance beam of science. <laughs> Down here, we've got these guys. It's our grunge band of science. Hit it. So right here is the center of the beam. The whole beam can turn around this big metal rod. So when I'm up here, I only have to push down a little to lift the whole band. They must weigh 500 kilograms, half a ton. Look, I can hold them all up just by sitting here. Balance rocks. Hello. Who are you? I'm Hazel Fanny, the science granny, oh with a demonstration on balance. I hold here in my hand a seven centimeter diameter industrial type rope. You know, the kind that you use to haul a 327 fuelie out of a 64 vet. I and a few of my friends from the women's club are going to do our very best to pull this end while some sweet young volunteers are going to pull their end. This will demonstrate that when forces are in balance, they are equal. Or when forces are unequal, an object moves. Okay, let's go, you Yancey boys. Let her rip. Oh, 
those Nancy boys are going in the mud. <laughs> This is her unequal. Breathe. You can hold a person in a shell with just one thumb. Put your thumb on someone's forehead and see if they can stand up. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't get up. Your center of gravity here in your belly needs to be supported or you will fall down. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's supported by the chair. In order to stand up, you have to be able to lean far enough forward to get your center of gravity over your feet. How did you hold me in the chair? Well, look how short you are. Center of gravity. When you push or pull on an object, you create a force. When I push with the spoon, my force pries the lid open. Pushing or pulling creates a force. It also creates a dang fine glass of chocolate milk. Snowboarding, knees, arms, balance! Snowboarding has a lot to do with your center of gravity, keeping your knees bent, keep your balance on your board. You just have to keep your shoulders level so you won't fall over backwards to get the back seat or anything. The back seat is when you get your weight over the back of your foot, and the board tends to fall back a little bit, and you usually fall on your butt. This domino is standing up. But if we push it up here, it will fall over because its center of gravity gets past this corner. Now, when that happens, the domino is moving in a circle. Weird, huh? Everything, no matter what its size or shape, has a center of gravity, uh, even this refrigerator. So watch. If I push here, right through the refrigerator's center of gravity, it slides along the floor without tipping. The forces are in balance, but if I push up here, the pushing force becomes a twisting force, and the refrigerator starts to turn around that corner down there. If I keep going, the weight of the refrigerator acting through the center of gravity takes over, and the refrigerator goes over. Everything, no matter what its size or shape, has a center of gravity. Centers of gravity are good. <sighs> and the last domino is in place now. Big domino has to up. A really cool thing you can do to show forces and balance. It's easy. Make a mobile. We use fishing line and chopsticks or whatever else we want to use.